Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's episode, I'm going to be doing a follow-up to a video that I made last year where I asked the question, is Ruby on Rails a good programming language to learn in 2021? So I'm going to take a little bit of an updated perspective on that for 2022. Now, in the last video that I did, I kind of focused on the popularity of Ruby on Rails when it comes to certain developer surveys. So I looked at the Stack Overflow survey and kind of compared it against previous years to see kind of where Ruby on Rails falls as popularity in programming languages. And the conclusion I came, kind of came to was that, yeah, there was kind of a drop overall, but the tech market has really grown and there's a lot more options out there for developing web applications. Ruby on Rails is still a very strong option with a strong community and maybe the language has has uh, matured a little bit but it's still a pretty strong language and in this episode I'm going to be taking a little bit of a different angle of this and kind of looking at the salary angle on how much income a Ruby on Rails developer could make in 2022 to decide whether it's a competitive language for, as somebody prospectively wanting to get into software engineering and pick a programming framework to specialize in. So the first thing I want to put on the screen here is a reference to a Reddit post where somebody recently asked about salaries for Ruby on Rails developers. And in this post, this person said that recruiters are telling him that a Ruby on Rails developer could easily make between one hundred fifty to $200,000. And most of the people on that thread who replied said, yes, that's actually kind of true for right now for where salaries are at. And some people said that they were getting paid 180000 to 200000 with benefits and they're working remotely. And uh, 130000 or so is actually kind of on the low end of what you could get if you have some Ruby on Rails experience. So the salaries for Ruby on Rails developers right now seem to be pretty good. And that's good news if you're thinking about specializing in that programming language because there's opportunities for you to make a lot of money. And I'd say from my own personal experience, being a developer, I have a lot of unsolicited messages from different recruitment firms quite regularly inviting me to interview for other Ruby on Rails positions. So I would say that right now the salaries are pretty good and the opportunities are quite plentiful. Now is $150,000 to $200,000 working remote with benefits good compared to other things that you could be specializing in if you want to do web application development? So to answer that question, I looked up a couple of recent salary surveys and try to compare what Ruby on Rails is doing compared to other programming languages. So one of the surveys I found interesting was the DICE 2021 developer survey of salaries. And even though we're doing 2021 numbers, uh, I still think it's recent enough where you could extrapolate where things are going into 2022. In that particular survey, one of the comments was programming skills such as Ruby, 128,000, up 12% from 2019 to 2021. JavaScript, 109,000, up 8.9% to 2021. And Python, 116,000, up 3.9% ,009 might not quite command the same salary numbers as some cloud and data related platforms and tools but they're equally vital to the operations of businesses large and small and that could in ma involve maintaining legacy code or building new applications and services. So I think this particular statement here is pretty strong evidence that Ruby on Rails as a programming framework is still high in demand in the IT market especially compared against JavaScript and Python and other languages that 
uh, that are out there that you can specialize in. It's interesting that the salary figure for 2021, it not only had the highest growth, but it had the highest number up there. And JavaScript and Python, they're pretty big as well. So that's quite impressive that Ruby kind of topped them in this particular survey at least. So drilling down in this survey, you can see some of the other competing or alternatives that you could specialize in. You have .NET there at 110,000, C Sharp at 114,000, Django at 105, JavaScript 109, regular Java 119, and Ruby still on top at 128,000. So Ruby on Rails does seem to get you some of the highest salaries in the IT market if you're doing application development. And personally, this is something that actually drew me into learning Ruby on Rails when I was trying to decide which programming platform to specialize in back in 2012. So just as it is right now with Ruby on Rails being in such high demand that developers get paid probably better there than anywhere else, the same was true back in 2012 where Ruby on Rails developers were in very high demand. Now, let's compare that to uh, the um, Robert Half Technology Survey Guide, which is for 2022. And in 2022, the median or 50 percentile is at $124,000. $500 for software development, for software engineering. And that is uh, kind of encompassing all technologies and platforms. And still, Ruby is a little bit higher than that. And so the 2021 survey for Ruby shows it's still above what the Robert Half overall software engineering salary survey is for 2022. So I think that's pretty good, showing that Ruby is pretty strong. And by the way, on that DICE survey, the way that they broke down their um, their analysis of skill level, I'm not exactly sure how that survey was structured, but still I think it's interesting and a good sign for Ruby to be on top. So why isn't Ruby on Rails getting beat out by other technologies or getting replaced. Well, my personal opinion on that is that Ruby on Rails is kind of a niche thing where it's doing one particular function within an entire IT stack. So if you're going to be doing Ruby on Rails programming, you're most likely going to be doing the back end part of a complex web application. And by the backend part, I mean the part that has all of the business logic rules associated with it, and it's storing information inside of a database, and it's doing all the CRUD operations there, and it's also maybe reading and connecting to third-party APIs to do whatever it is that business has to do to communicate with other businesses and their business partners. Whereas, like, if you're doing JavaScript, it's more likely that you're going to be doing something front-end related where a lot of the cool stuff going on in JavaScript world right now is with React or Vue, Angular. Things are happening on the client end inside of the web browser. And then Python, although they have Django, which is a web application development framework, the thing that Python is best known for and strongest at is data science. So a lot of the people who work with Python, they're doing complex data analysis and writing smaller scripts in Python and not necessarily web applications. There is a web application component to Python, but the Python world is actually a lot bigger than that. Ruby on Rails is very specialized to web application development and more specifically the back end. So I want to highlight an article that I found this week about GitLab which is a, uh, a business that powers its product through Ruby on Rails 
and they did a little analysis on why they're sticking with Ruby on Rails and why they feel that's a great platform for them. And they kind of compared two extremes of web application programming. They looked at PHP, which is kind of easy to use and, and get started in. Approachability, they say, is high. But when you're dealing with PHP, the code could get very sloppy and unmanageable really fast. They compared that extreme against Java, which I assume is like Java Spring framework. Java is highly structured and it imposes a lot of discipline on the program, <clears throat> on the programmer. But the problem that you have with Java is that it can be very cumbersome to work with. So it sets you up to have a really good structure for a complex enterprise application, but because you have to do all these very manual declarations of everything, and the code itself is very verbose, the amount of work that you could get done in Java in a short amount of time is kind of impeded by the amount of structure that it imposes on you and all of the boilerplate work that you have to do. So it's a structured language, but it's not very approachable or, or easy to use. Well, I, I guess you could say it's easy to use, but it's it takes a lot of care to write Java code. And the reason that GitLab likes Ruby on Rails is because it strikes a balance between those two extremes. Ruby on Rails, because of its nature of being an interpreted language, and it's kind of uh, it's kind of a scripting language. It's really easy to to do things. You don't have to worry about type declarations. You could uh, you could get a lot done very quickly with it. But at the same time, there's a lot of opinions in Ruby on Rails, and it does impose a little bit of structure on you, just enough to keep your overall code kind of organized and and and. Uh, and scalable to some extent. So as I've commented in some of my previous videos, some of the untyped aspects of Ruby on Rails could cause you problems when you're dealing with very complex data, and that gives it a little bit of difficulty with scalability. However, there's ways of working around that. So I kind of agree with GitLab that Ruby on Rails does strike a balance between giving the programmer the flexibility to, need to do what they got to do but also impose a little bit of structure. So if you're watching this video and you're interested in the state of Ruby on Rails and whether or not it's good to learn, chances are you're probably a newer developer or somebody who's experienced in another programming language is interested in picking up Ruby on Rails and you kind of want to know how to get into the industry. So the difficult thing about these salary surveys is that they're kind of tailored, they're kind of speaking about people who have a few years of experience doing Ruby on Rails already. And if you're just starting out, that's really hard to get. You don't have experience, so how are you going to get a job to get the experience? Well, I think there's a few ways that you could probably get there. One is by creating your own projects and having a very strong portfolio of professional looking applications that you could show in an interview. I think a good example of that is kind of like what I'm doing with the Stonks on Rails series of videos that I'm putting out. That's just a personal hobby application for helping me track stocks and do a little bit of stock analysis, but it uses all of the concepts of a full web application. So if you could build something like that, put it on your GitHub, that gives you something to talk about in an interview. Another way that you could get into the Rails industry is if you're using another platform that's kind of related to an application that uses Rails. So JavaScript is a very good way to do that because if you're a front-end developer, you could be working in React or Vue and be very heavy on that part of the application. And then if you're working with a team of Rails developers who are doing the back end, you might have some opportunities there to do a few pull requests on the back end 
and kind of get a little bit of experience and kind of ease in to learning Ruby on Rails. Now, how I got into this industry is uh, kind of more of the, the first path I took where I had my own applications and, and that helped me in a job interview. And I might do a completely separate video just talking about that story. So that's it for now. I think the key takeaway from this is that Ruby on Rails developer salaries are really strong and really appealing. And I think it shows that there's a very high market demand for Ruby on Rails. And it's a good language to learn in 2022 still. Anyway, I hope you found this to be useful. If you liked it, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you in the next video. What is that son of a bitch doing? Oh my fucking god, really? She's a goddamn rape. I can't believe how fucking noisy suburbs are.